Johnny Morris. We're out in Candlestick Park where where the uh, 49ers have, have come up with so much yardage in the first half, you can't believe it. Did you, John, have you ever seen anything like this? But the two fumbles were important that Chicago recovered. But what about the total offense? Well, San Francisco, one. 276 to 87 for the Bears. That is really a mismatch as far as statistics are concerned. Yeah. But you mentioned those two fumbles. The one where they missed up the snap, gave the Bears a touchdown. The other one, remember, it was a fumble way downfield on about the Bears' 10-yard line, which prevented San Francisco from getting another touchdown. So yeah. I know that Bill Walsh thinks, geez, we, sh we should be winning this game by a big margin, and it's uh, it's anybody's ball game. Up by four. Of course, Montana had 199 yards passing, two touchdown passes. The beautiful one was a 46-yarder. This is not one of Montana's better plays, nor the 49ers. The snap went errant. Montana never saw it, and Hartenstein came on like a big bear and fell on it. And this set up the touchdown run by Walter Payton from two yards out. Number 72 of a career that I think is just getting started. Mr. Durable, Mr. Excitement, and strong as a horse. This made it 14 to seven. And of course, uh, the field goal attempt I thought was rather encouraging if you're a Chicago Bear fan that Thomas was able to kick that one from 33 yards and get him within range anyway. So we'll be back with the second half. It's a 14 to 10 game San Francisco leads, but the Bears are breathing fire. 49ers are warming up in the sun here in the, near the city on the bay, San Francisco. That's of course Clark making the catch, putting it away in Montana who had a fantastic first half. In fact, we'll look and see. He was 13 of 21 for 199 yards. Vince Evans was 4 for 11, 57 yards, and we'll look at those stats right now. Again, total offense, Johnny, 87 yards for Chicago and San Francisco with 276. And the two turnovers, plus the Bears had only 28 yards rushing. That means Walter Payton didn't get too many yards. He was 11 for 31. However, they were minus in other areas with, with uh, Sui not getting a plus on as far as the, as the yardage is concerned as we see the kickoff. Matt Barr approaches the ball. He's kicking with the wind, but hangs it. It's taken at the 10-yard line by Bashnagel. Bashnagel gets clear and is finally getting out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Good field position for Chicago. And while Evans, while Evans did not have a great throwing first half, he did not have an interception, nor did the Bears have a fumble. This is Milt McCall, Bill McCall's son, as he comes down on the kickoff team, gets through a little traffic here, and he's the one who ends up making the tackle on Brian Bashnagel. Milt McCall, very tall for a linebacker, about 6'6". Six, six. Ball is on the 32-yard line. It is a beautiful sunny day, and the Bears have come from the other side of the great beyond. They're back in at 14 to 10. Ben Evans all the way. Here comes Bashnagel in motion. High formation. Toss back to Walter Payton. Sui gets a block. Gets, Walter gets outside. And then his shoestring with a great tackle by Carlton Williamson. Williamson with a great tackle on the outside. Or Walter might have made the sideline. The offensive lineup. Evans, Walter Payton, Sui with Ricky Watson, Brian Bashnagel, of course, outside. Albrecht, Noah Jackson, Neil, Sorry. Dennis Lick and Big Robin Earl, number 81, again the starter at tight end. A pick up of four. He's got a pick up of two. Second down and eight. Play action pass. Evans going to the deep sideline for one. Great catch. Just inside 49er territory. Eric Wright stuck him hard in the back. That was a nice grab by Watts as he went down the field, turns on the speed, and he drove Eric Wright off. And if the pass is right, boy, that was a real nice move to the outside. Good leaping catch and absorbs the hit and hangs on to the ball. Ricky Watts who has been a little bit, he had a good uh, exhibition season, but he has a tendency sometimes to be a little bit inconsistent, and they want to get that consistency out of him if they can. First and ten, just inside San Francisco territory, early in this third period. Fitz Evans back, Good wide clock. open. Bashnagel in between. It's going to be called incomplete. He split the seam on the zone between the cornerback and the safety man. And Williamson makes another tough tackle, number 22. It was Carlton Williamson who made up for his mistake. He didn't get over there in time on the double coverage. Bashnagel was wide open down the field, so Williamson came over and did the best thing that he could do is try and jolt the ball loose, and he did it so. So it was an incomplete pass, a mistake there in the 49er defensive coverage. Williamson out of Pittsburgh, a 204-pounder, six feet tall, a rookie, but playing well and hitting. 
Second down and 10 on the 49. Fake handoff, bootleg play by Evans. He's being chased and knocked down the 47 yard line by Keena Turner. Boy, the outside linebacker oh. really makes the play that time on Evans. Yeah, that was Keena Turner. Great job as Vince Evans got, looked like he was going to get around the horn for a minute. Here it is. And Pillars, Reese, and Dwayne Board, the three up men on the 34. Harper, Buns, Reynolds, and Keena Turner, who just made that last tackle. Lott, Williams, the Hicks, and Wright. Three of those young people are rookies, and Hicks has only been around a couple of years. They really do hit you. Third down, and seven on the 47. Slot to the left. Davey Williams is back in the backfield. Almost offside, 49ers. Evans back. The flags are down. He's got a free one. Bashnagel at the 32-yard line. Eric Wright making the tackle. Mr. Clutch, Brian Bashnagel. That time, I think the 49ers jumped offside. Vince Evans figured, hey, I got a free play. Let's take it. He has plenty of time to throw the ball. And you're going to see Bashnagel appear in the screen right in the center here. Good pass blocking by the offensive line. There's Bashnagel. Brings it in with both hands into the tummy. And it's a first down for Chicago. They will obviously refuse the penalty. Boy, Bashnagel is one of the great third down receivers you'll ever see. He runs the pattern the same way. Refuse. First down. He was very nearly a Rhodes Scholar. That tells you something. What is nearly a Rhodes Scholar? You're either a Rhodes Scholar well, or you're not. Well, he was a finalist. Oh. You know, and that means something if you make the finals for that. Because <laughs> you and I would know nothing about that, but that's what I was told. First down for Chicago on the 32. Moving into San Francisco territory now. Walter Payton looking for somewhere to go. Finds it. Finally hit by Turner and dropped. About the 27. Talk about a man on the move. Long way to go and a short time to get there. Could be his theme song. He averages five yards a carry against the San Francisco 49ers over the years. The last time the Bears were here, they beat the 49ers 28-27. Remember that, that last pass to James Scott? Now Walter had 162 yards and three touches that day. But it's not over. The I formation now on second and four. Hand off to Walter Payton. Boom! Walter Payton ran into the immovable object by the name of Jack Reynolds, and Buns also helped. Nothing seemed to bother him, but he shook his head on that one. He had shook his head, but he is unbelievably durable. Just, I mean, he has speed, speed quickness, great hands. He might be the prototype really? size, too, for a great running back. Uh, under six feet tall so that he can hunch down and run under things, and still 204 pounds and hard as a rock. And he does not get tired during the course of a game. That's right. Third down and short. Short yardage situation. Toss left to Payton. Payton's got the running room. Now he's guarding to the outside behind Jackson's block. Gets to the, about the 12 yard line. Runs the linebacker, finally tackles it. Hicks had to help on it. Walter Payton at his best. Yes, he's coming out of that I formation, and that's where he is the best. Good block by Matt Sui there as he dipped inside. Then he followed Noah Jackson, who very seldom leaves his feet when he's pulling out as a pulling guard. Finally knocked out of bounds. Hicks is on the on the call. But sometimes Jackson doesn't lose, leave his feet, but he provides a pillar to go around. A rather large one. Right? Yeah. First and ten, the ball on the 12-yard line. Bears have taken the second half kickoff and moved it. Evans back to throw to the bootleg side, right side, slapped to Ricky Watts, and it's knocked away and played very well by Ronnie Lott. Well, Watts is claiming that Lott hit him just a touch before the ball got there, and it was a very close call, no penalty. Okay, down on the quick post with Evans rolling out, and here he comes. Now, let's see, did Lott hit him too soon? That's a bang-bang play. Tough. Boy, I'd say you're playing corner out there. He's an All-American safety man, but just playing that corner against people like Watts, you've got to do everything within your realm of possibilities. Arch, that's Arthur Reach. Archie Reach. Reach, pardon me, that's down the nose tackle, and he's being helped off. Big fella's hurting. Chicago's driving. San Francisco, 14 to 10 over Chicago. Here's two good friends. Tampa Bay comes to Soldier Field, takes on the Bears. That'll be a live broadcast here on CBS, and that could be a little bit of a if tough Doug, game. If huh? Doug Williams is on, it's going to be a very, a very good game. Tampa Bay's one and one. They lost to uh, Kansas City today. All right, 
second, second ten now. On the 12-yard line. The Bears have not given up the ball in the third period. Straight drop back pass by Evans. He's got Peyton out. Now he's going to cross to Robin Earl. Earl's going to score a touchdown. The Bears are ahead in the football game, and Robin Earl spiked the defensive back and the ball. Boy, once he got the ball, you knew they were going to stop him before he got to the goal line. He's like a freight train. Boy. Okay, plenty of time as they took Peyton out of the backfield there. Peyton went straight down, and you're going to see the tight end Earl goes down to hooks and then dips to the outside. Hicks misses the tackle, and then there's two 49ers waiting, Ronnie Lott, and I'll bet he wasn't looking forward to that. And finally, Robin Earl pulls his way into the end zone and I think is cementing himself in the number one spot at tight end. Yeah, he made quite an adjustment a year ago from fullback to tight end. Here's Thomas out of Ashnagel's hole. Boy, that is straight as a string. Suddenly it's Chicago 17, San Francisco 14. The Bears took the kickoff, a good return by Bashnagel, and Evans and Walter Payton took it right down and gave it to Robin Earl. Bears 17, 49ers 14. We'll open your eyes to a rainbow. Robin Earl's third touchdown catch. He had three last year, and that's the first one this year, so he now has four. He's lining up right next to Thomas there as the former Notre Dame will kick it off from the 35. That's Wilson and Ronnie Lott. This is going to be Lott kicking it at the 12-yard line. Almost coughs it up. Now comes straight up. Oh, he is drilled in here. As Todd Bell got in on the tackle, the Ohio State rookie. And Brian Cabral, boy, he hits. What happened that time, because it took him so long to get a hold of the ball, the blocks by the four horsemen were already thrown, so everybody had come off their blocks off the 49er four horsemen blocks and then he just had a host of white jerseys charging at him right here and the three of them will hit him at one time Woo! i'll tell you ronnie lott likes to make <laughs> contact though he's been at 101 game and i was my whole career take me off the kickoff team. Yeah. first and ten the ball on the 32. montana out of the eye going to throw it go to the outside all the down the 39 yard line terry schmidt was there and boy so was uh Earl Cooper coming out of the backfield. He was wide open for about an easy quick six right down the sideline. There's 49. He's open. And then you see Bruce Heron trying to make the stop short and Schmidt deep and a nice catch. I like, I like Montana's touch. I like his touch throwing the ball. He's got a real good release. Solomon's off the field with a sprained ankle. Solomon's out. So you've got second a short yardage offense. Second a couple. Montana changing the play. Off. Ricky Patton off the right side. Doesn't look like he made it from here. No, he's going to be a little bit short. We'll have to see. Solomon was really limping when he came off the field. We'll see if he comes back in the game for Ricky Patton. Ricky Ricardo Patton. He said his mommy was a big fan of I Love Lucy many years ago, and she liked Ricky Ricardo, so she named her son Ricky Ricardo. Well, at least didn't name him Lucille. <laughs> Could have been worse. Yeah. Now we've got third and short. Here are a couple of scores of action around the NFL. Oh, San Diego and Detroit are locked up in the third period. Lions are playing tough. This division's going to be tough, the central division of the NFC. Freddie Solomon is back in the game now. Short yardage. Handoff. No. Oh, don't believe so. Number 31. That's Walt Easley, the big rookie from West Virginia. And if anything, he might have lost a little bit. That was Dan Hampton that came under. The Razorback made some play from that inside spot that time that was a super play by the entire right side of the bears defensive line they just pushed the offensive line back as you see some more scores dallas 24 to 14 in the second quarter ron springs is running wild for the cowboys we're told here's young miller back standing oh he gets a high step oh he throws and that is a 5.2 second hang time that may die at the bears six yard line that was some kick under extreme pressure by young miller and he did it with his little toes. We've got a football game. The Bears are on top by three, but San Francisco's kicking. It's 17-14. Keep in mind, the 49er defense held Sims, Billy Sims, to 59 yards on 21 carries a week ago. Walter Payton now has 53 on 15 carries, so... Walter can move those stats around very quickly when he has the hot hand. Let's see what happens. The ball's on the eight-yard line. First and ten. 
Well set back. The average to Walter Payton. He's hit hard and doesn't get much. Maybe up over the 10. Archie Reese back in at nose tackle. Made a good play. If you don't have a nose tackle that can ride with the flow and not get blocked, you can't play the 34. Archie Reese is a little bit banged up after being in on that tackle. Looked like he might have hurt his elbow, his arm or his elbow. That might be one of the most amazing things in football is how that nose tackle can take those blocks and move along and shuffle down the line and make plays. Okay, we'll wait to see how Archie's doing. We'll be back in just a moment. We got 9.06 left in the third period. Archie Reese has given it a shot. He hurt his ankle. Now he's holding his arm. A 265-pounder out of Clemson. And big fella, you can't play any tougher than you played today. Hardy is in there. The rookie from Iowa is in it nose right now. And it's second down and six. Handoff. Walter Payton. Boy, he doesn't get much. Hit hard there. 49ers reacting. Pete Kugler, number 77, the rookie from Penn State, made the tackle. And they went right up the middle, right where Mr. Archer Reese used to be hanging around, and they're going to give it a try. As you look at Philadelphia, 6 to 3 over New England in the third quarter. The Jets on top of Cincinnati at the half. Todd having a hot hand for the New York team. Here we are. It's third down and four. Third down and four. The Bears have had the ball most of this third period. This is a big play. Roll to the right by Evans. Arambolero can't hold on to it. And Willie Harper, linebacker, disturbed the big tight end and knocked it away. Good third down defense. A partial rollout for Vince Evans, and uh, the pass was there. Just didn't quite uh, make the connection. He didn't hang on to the ball, mm, primarily because this man, Willie Harper, was around kind of hanging all over. Robin Earl. The 49ers still sitting pretty basic in their 3-4 and not doing much red-dogging with it. One of these, uh, pretty soon they're going to have to take a couple of chances maybe and see if they can cause themselves a turnover or something. Parsons is standing right on the goal line. Solomon and Hicks are waiting for it. The wind is against the Chicago putter. He gets a great oh. hang time. Solomon at the 40. Look out for Freddie Solomon. Solomon, a good run back to the 43-yard line. And the 49ers set up shop in Chicago territory. A 46-yard punt, an 18-yard return. Hilgenberg and Bashnagel making the tackle. Here's Solomon on the return. He was trying to get to the other side, but there was one bear downfield that turned him inside, and it turned out to be the best way to go. Straight up the middle. Get yourself 10, 15 yards. Good field position. 42-yard line for San Francisco. Montana hasn't had the ball now much for San Francisco in this half, in this quarter. First and 10 now on the 42. Here's Faden the pack. He's rushed and throws the ball away. Dan Hampton, number one pick a couple of years ago. Put so much heat on Montana, he threw it halfway to Helena. The statistics are starting to even out a little bit. As Montana looks over for Guy Benjamin, who has gotten the signal or the word from Coach Bill Walsh to call the play, and then it's up to Montana to run that play or audible if he thinks he needs to. Reese, the big uh, nose tackle, has a hyperextended elbow and probably will not come back. Second down and 10. Montana from a double wing back formation. He's by himself. Ooh, he fights, 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 fights. Knocked out at the 33-yard line by Bruce Harris. Boy, he's a sneaky receiver, isn't he? Yes, he is. And that time, the 49ers caught the Bears shifting their defensive line. Here comes Clark across the field. Heron, 51, is going to pick him up. And the pass was there. But there was no pressure from the left side from Harris because he was in the process, Al Harris, of shifting and didn't get off on a pass rush. And they had plenty of time to throw, especially to that side. The under receiver, the Solomon taking things deep and clearing out. Clark can catch a basket full of passes. And he has. He also married this universe. It shows you can't be all wrong all the time, right? Right. Third down and short. Short yardage. Montana still going back to throw on it. Gets it to Cooper on the outside. Cooper stepped out of bounds. Walter Scheid is there. First down. I think Cooper's a loaded. 
227, 62. He played at Rice. I think they only won one game in two seasons. Uh, that's all right. Years. The bigger they are, the harder to fall. When I was a kid, I used to watch you hit those guys. Yeah. I tell you, you really hit. Oh, yeah. The harder they fall on you. First and 10. 49ers driving now on the 31. Solomon to the bottom of the screen. Mark to the top. Here's the handoff of the run. Ricky Patton pulled down by Hampton from behind and for a loss of a couple. Hampton's playing some defensive game. Yes, for a man who's having to move around and play tackle and play end and play tackle. If he does keep doing a good job like that, he's stuck in there on the inside playing defensive tackle. The great there thing is it also allows Alan Harris to play at the defensive end. Doesn't right. It? And that's one of the reasons that they're doing it. And they know that Alan Page is going to be retiring. That's Guy Benjamin, number seven, the former Stanford quarterback that went to Miami. He's arguing a little bit with the head coach, Mr. Walsh, on the call. Do you think he was arguing with him about it? Well, you can always argue with your college coach. It's when you get into pro ball, you can't argue. Now Montana gets into the debate. I could always see things much more clearly when I wasn't playing. <laughs> Which was a lot of the time. <laughs> All right. We'll be back at Candlestick in just a moment. Chicago leads 17 to 14. The 49ers might be driving. Ah, uh, everybody has a good time in San Francisco on a breezy, beautiful day. Ain't life grand, huh? Uh, he's got to be a 49er fan. He had his jacket right there. Second down and 10. Montana with the ball in the Chicago 31. He hasn't had a chance to operate. Here goes Cooper in motion, the fullback. Keeps the back end for blocking. Now he's caught. Now he's going to throw across the middle. He's got Carson Clark hanging on the ball. Walter Scheid almost picked it up. Boy, Clark is going to be mad. That ball was delivered. That's two or three that he's dropped today that were maybe a little bit tough catches, but you got to hang on to him. But this one was right in there. You're going to see Walter Scheid almost as Montana adjusted very nicely in the pocket. Boy, that was right on the button. But Walterscheid was so intent on making the tackle, he didn't see the ball come. Clark did adjust well. When Montana was in trouble in the pocket, he adjusted and came over towards the way that Montana was. And, uh, he might have looked away quickly. Might yeah. have taken the peek, huh? Yeah. Third down and 10. Crucial third down defensive play. Crucial third down offensive play, too. Here's the slant. Almost oh, picked off. Walterscheid, when he's put his hands on things, Let's go to Brent Musburger, Brent Musburger right now for an NFL report. Let's go quickly to Brent. All right, the Detroit Lions moving down against the San Diego Chargers. They give us to Billy Sims, and Sims powers in from the 12-yard line, and the Lions are upsetting San Diego 2014. Back to Tom Brookshire. will be trying a field goal from the 37, so make it a 47-yarder. That is beyond his range. Let's see if he gets it there. It's going to be short. The ball will come back to the line of scrimmage, and the Bears' defense did hold when it had to. A few boos ring out, huh? Well, the Bears will also have pretty good field position because when you miss a field goal from out there, it goes back to the line of scrimmage, not at the 20 like it used to. There's Big Archie, dislocated arm. Don't know if it's the lower part of the elbow. He's been some competitor playing nose in there on defense for San Francisco. Atlanta beating Green Bay. That's the final. But right now, Chicago's got the ball first and 10. Payton stumbles and falls on the infield. Gets to perhaps the 33. Williamson making the tackle. Final scores now. New Orleans knocking off the Los Angeles Rams. Houston, Cleveland, was that the snowstorm, right? <laughs> Kansas City handling Tampa Bay 23-10. Of course, Tampa plays Chicago next Sunday. Big, big win here for Perkins of the New York Giants, 17-7. Right here is second down and 10. Walter Payton just got back to the line of scrimmage. Watches to the left. Here's Vince Evans back to throw. It's a screen pass, double screen, out to Walter Payton on the right. Get the block for Neal and is hit from behind by Pete Kugler. And a fumble. The 
49ers fan is a fumble. And so do the officials. Now that was a fake screen left and a screen right, a double screen fake, which was a rather interesting play, and Peyton almost got away to get some yards out of it. Buns recovered, but it was Kugler, the young Penn State rookie, that made it happen. Walter Payton has fumbled twice now, once last year and once, to, I mean, once last week and once today. Actually had two fumbles last week and one today, so that's three. And he is not a fumbler. If you look back on his record, he has fumbled very seldom over the years. Big opportunity for San Francisco. Montana with a slot right. Now it's a trip right. Everybody's out and kept one back in. Montana goes to Solomon, finds it at the 10-yard line. And Reuben Henderson knocks Solomon out of the back of mind. What a throw. The Bears decided to put a little pressure on. They came hard. And Montana, with a partial rollout, beat the blitz. There was Bruce Heron picked up. And there is Solomon wide open down the field. Henderson really gets a big shot on him, but not before he gets down to the five-yard line. So San Francisco in great shape. But give some credit to Montana on that play and the San Francisco backfield for picking up the blitz. Heron came through. And a real good call against that blitz, Johnny. Very well analyzed. It's first and goal. The ball is right on the five-yard line. Pretty tight formation. Fakes the handoff with a run. Now he's going back to the oh. ball. He's it out. Charlie Young scores a touchdown standing up. The sneak back from the tight end. A short wing back formation. Almost a short yardage looking offense. And a very delicate throw by Montana. And not too many teams would do this first down on the five yard line. It certainly worked as all the Bear defensive backs are over to the left. And there was Young came against the green and he was wide open. That's a Bill Walsh call if I ever saw one. I just wonder who's key in the tight end. San Francisco back on top. First the fumble by Peyton. And the soft touch of Montana first to Solomon, then to Charlie Young. That bar. Montana holding. It. It's good. Some ball game. And it's going to swing back and forth. Now the crowd is cheering. They love the offense of Bill Walsh, the general manager and head coach. Well, that's the first down play on the five. Most teams, you got to figure a first down situation. You're going to try and punch it over. You got four downs to do it. You're not going to take a chance on a pass. And that's where they they fooled the Bears on that play. And now let's go to Brent Musburger at NFL Control. Earlier today, Johnny and Tom, the Buffalo Bills exploded against the Baltimore Colts. Joe Ferguson is having a phenomenal season. He threw four touchdown passes, each one to a different receiver. Watch Jerry Butler here. He's hemmed in, was coming inside, made a quick move to the outside, 54 yards, and Buffalo wins easily, 35-3. Back now to Tom Brookshire and Johnny Morris. Back out west. The 49ers finally got the ball in good position and scored in this third period. There's 5.41 left in the third, and it's a four-point margin. Keep that in mind. Matt Barr now will kick off with the wind in his back from the 35. And back deep, Williams, of course, is in the middle. Fashnagel will be on his left, and Jeff Fisher, the rookie, will be on his right. Barr is not a deep kicker of the ball. Even with the wind, he might not kick it real deep. The wind has kind of swirled around and changed directions, it seems, too. And notice the flags over there. So he may not be kicking with the wind as they were in the first half in this direction. They're out going towards the bay, the Golden Gate and <laughs> Bay Meadows. <laughs> <laughs> A local racetrack of some bay. Here comes by the ball stays on. Oh, that's the biggest kick he's ever kicked. Oh. Williams has to go out of the end zone. Some photographer got it right in the lens. What a kick by Matt Barr. McEnroe against Borg. Borg, 6-4, then loses 6-2. McEnroe came back for a 6-4. Looks like they're going all the way. Are the microphones, microphones hot at that uh, tournament, I wonder? They've got to be if McEnroe's there. I like the way the big Swede handles himself. He just keeps quiet and plays. First and ten now. Bears with the ball on their own 20 after a tremendous kick by Barr. Throw set. Handoff inside to Walter Payton. He slides off. 
the linebacker. Buns got a hold of him, but Walter slithered on and made some yardage. Looked like he picked up almost five, maybe more. But still a hard-nosed play by Danny Buns, 57. Boy, he had to take the line on right in the middle and then jammed it up to prevent a big hole. He filled that hole nicely. Good-looking talent on a very young San Francisco team. Imagine with three rookie secondary people starting. And Ross said, I got to go right out and go with the new secondary. We might as well start with the best. And they were first ring right from training team. Second down and five on the 25. This is Cooley. Cut back inside. Cooley with that real good little cut at the line of the city. Gets out almost to the 40 before he stops it. He's deceptive in size and also in his maneuverability. Well, I think he earned a turn uh, to carry the ball. He's been trying to block for Walter Payton all the time. As you see, good block by Dan Neal. See Dan Neal, number 52? He really took uh, the, the nose man of San Francisco out. And finally, number 22, Dwight Hicks, made the tackle. But it was a good block by Dan Neal. And a good run by Suey, who picked up that good block. First and ten now. The ball out on the 40-yard line. Suey and Williams in there. Bank. With a late throw, hit Robin Early, makes a tough catch. Earl picks up eight or nine yards, and it was a low thrown ball. Reynolds finally made the tackle. Play action pass. Number 22 Williams is blocking and checking out. He just waited for 81. It was the secondary receiver. That was Robin Earl down by the knees. Robin made sure of the catch, and it's almost. A first down. What is the uh, yardage here? Second and two? Second and a couple on the 47. Peyton is back in. He was only out one play. That's a lot for him. Evans from the pro gives it to Walter Peyton. Sorry, made the block on the safety man. Now Walter cuts through and gets inside. Inside the 45. Reynolds coming all the way over with Lott making the stop. Well, there were two guys out there, and he got right through them both. Just sliced through them like a uh, loaf of bread. Watch him. As they string it out, you're going to see Willie Harper, 59, is out there. Peyton looks for the open. He couldn't find it at first, and then he says, okay, now I found it. And he went right through Harper and Danny Buns before Hacksaw Reynolds gets in on the tackle, but not before Walter Peyton has a first down for Chicago at the 45. Peyton now with 73 yards on 24 carries, and 257 still left in the third period. An I formation now. Toss back to Walter Peyton. Two, three moves in a row inside the 40. Wow. What an athlete. Hacksaw Reynolds was grasping for straws there. He got through and he thought he was going to get in on the tackle and Peyton was gone. I saw a stat on Walter Peyton once that was something like he has 200 and some odd 10-yard carries in his career. And I mean, 10-yard runs are hard carries where you get hit hard at the end of them and he has over 200. There's Hacksaw Reynolds. He looks funny in that uniform. Yes. Second down and five. Suey hard inside the 35. Bears look like they've got something going. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Tom Brookshire, thank you very much. This will give you an idea of just how well John McEnroe is playing. Bjorn Borg had taken a 4-2 lead in the third set. They were even at a set apiece. Now watch Borg. He'll come back, hit an over-the-head backhand, and McEnroe on the move is going to hit a winner. They are now 1-1 in the fourth. And remember, McEnroe leads by a set. Let's send you back now to Tom Brookshire. First and ten, the ball on the 34. Vince Evans moving the Bears. Drop back quickly to pass. Good protection. Walter Payton down around the 30, is it? Terry Totola makes the stop. That was Payton that did a hook up in front of him. Payton can also kick it. If pushed to that point, he can kick it, catch it, punt it, pump it up, and sell tickets. And there he is coming out of the backfield on a sky pattern. He's right down there. Hopefully he can turn around and dodge somebody is what they're hoping when he gets this kind of a pass. But Totolo, who used to be with the Bears, made the tackle. Second and five on the 29. A little over a minute left in the third quarter. The Bears trail by four. Fake handoff. Now the draw play to Payton. Gets to the 25. Reynolds making the stop. Walter Payton needing 131 to move past Jimmy Taylor. 
in the fourth on the all-time rushing list. He now has 82 yards and 22 carries and is gradually becoming the workhorse that he has been for so many years. Third and a little bit, which is a tough yard he can get sometimes. Archie Reese is back in at nose tackle. Hand off to Suey. Cut back. Suey's got the first. And also the trouble with 49ers. Well, Suey should have some big holes because the 49ers have got to keep Peyton quite a bit, you know. And he's such a great runner that the remaining back, the other back, should have some holes. Let's take a look at Hacksaw Reynolds. He's number 64. He's going to watch the guards. He's going to watch the back action. <laughs> and he's all ready to go. He plays off Dan Neal. 52 makes the block. And there is Hacksaw Reynolds on the tackle, Matt Suey. But he has the first down. <laughs> The teams will change to the infield side of the diamond here at Candlestick Park. The Bears on the move with first and ten on the 23. But they trail. It's San Francisco 21, Chicago 17. Vince Evans talking to Neil Armstrong. This is an offensive must. In the fourth period, the San Diego Chargers have just regained the lead from the Detroit Lions. It was Chuck Muncie busting across for his second touchdown in the football game. From inside the five, it is now 21-20, fourth period. Let's send you back now to Brookie and Johnny Morris. Sports coverage of the National Football League has been sponsored. Left the ball first and ten on the 23. Chicago has the football. Kugler's at left defensive end, the rookie from State. Reese is back in at the nose tackle. We don't know how he's gotten back in there. And Ford is the offense, our defensive right in. And of course, Vince Evans has been the quarterback for Chicago. Straight back to pass. He got Walter Payton swinging. He's going for. Robin Earl, the big tight end, 25. Dan Buns and Earl have a wrestling match. Interesting theory by Walsh on his secondary, though. He said they're all from major conferences and tough competition. Michigan, Pittsburgh. USC. SC. All winning traditions. And, you know, I'm surprised that the 49ers have gone straight with this, with very little blitzing today. They haven't... They're just going in a basic 3-4 all the way. If it's simple, they might be wise. Second down and five on the 18. Walter Payton with the ball. He's hit hard. Doesn't get very much. Maybe a yard or so. Jack Reynolds there. Now, here's where games are determined. Now you have a situation where it's going to be about, what, third and... third and three or four. The Bears may be into a passing situation. If not, but... You haven't been blitzing all day. You haven't done anything fancy. The coach goes through his mind. Hey, maybe if we just send everybody this time, we can mess them up. Let's see what they do. All right. They might run a draw with Walter Payton, which would be some kind of a call. It's third down and four on the 17. San Francisco up by four points. They're not going to blitz. It's the rollout left by. He's going for Ricky Watts has it on the two-yard line. A great throw by Vince Evans. And a great catch by Ricky Watts in traffic. Okay, let's take a look. Ricky Watts, Eric Wright's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Tough job. He's covering, he's in there tight, but the pass is right there. And Watts put it away. First down, Chicago. Nice pass and a good catch under the circumstances. That's just an excellent play. Excellent. And a great throw by Evans on the move. Does he have feet for a quarterback? And you can't blame Eric Wright. You know, he's, he's there. First and goal on the two. Under 13 minutes left. Walter Payton up over the top. Doesn't get there. Dan Buns was the first linebacker that stopped it. And Hacksaw Reynolds was under it. They are hitting Walter as soon as he gets the hand up. He still makes yardage. It's just very difficult down close. There's so many people in such a small area. Boy, if they, if they ever roll Vince Evans out, he could scroll across the goal line. It is second and goal from the two. Chicago 
and eats the touchdown. Walker pays for the run. Oh, that was the ball. It's San Francisco has it. San Francisco has it. A tremendous tackle put on Walter Payton. And he might have been carrying the ball out again away from his body. Craig Pukey comes out with it, the linebacker, number 54. And somebody really laid the wood to Payton as he tried to cut back. He saw the spot, came up the field to go for the touchdown, and it was Danny Buns, 57, who knocked the ball loose, and there's Greg Pukey for the recovery. And all of a sudden, Walter Payton is not being able to hang on to the ball. It was knocked loose. San Francisco stops the drive, first down at the two, and down on the field is Walter Payton. But I was wrong. Walter was not carried it loosely. He just had it jarred out of there. San Francisco holds and gets the ball on the two. In Hawaii, we call the gift of giving Makana Aloha. Here it was, a gaping hole, but you're going to see Buns 57 go low and puts his shoulder right into the ball there and knocks it loose with help from McCall from the other side. And the ball did come out. There's no question. And Danny Buns, with a good play, stops the drive. All right, first down. Now the 49ers must not only use up the clock, but they've got to get that ball out of danger. That time it was Walt Easley, the fullback, the rookie from West Virginia. And he got him some breathing room. Walter Scheid having to make the tackle. And there's somebody down. Number 80, did I see? Ethan Ransom. Tied in. He's just coming off of injuries and getting healthy this year. But he is parallel with the ground and on it right now. At 11.59. Left in the fourth Today, when many makers are taking quality out of their cigars, Dutch Masters is putting more in. There's Easton Ramson, the tight end. He's limping off. They checked his knee, but he is walking on it. And there's the time in the fourth period and clicking. The Bears have three timeouts, but the 49ers have the ball. Second and four. Near the pitcher's mound. On the eight yard line. Montana. He's being chased by Otis Wilson and dropped for a loss. Big defensive play by the number one draft a year ago for Chicago. Otis Wilson has plenty of speed. He found a little hole to get through. You're going to see 55. He slipped in behind the blocking, and he has really running back speed, and he just grabbed a hold of Ricky Patton and made sure with the old necktie tackle. Number 55, Otis Wilson. Jimmy Finks and Jimmy Parmer feel that that was one of the great drafts they've made because he is such an athlete. You just have to learn all the things not to do as a linebacker, and he's learned them now. If you were the coach, what would you call now? Third down deep in your own territory? Would you run the ball or would you take a chance? And well, Montana throws the ball. The whole team thinks about throwing. I'm actually going to go ahead and throw it. The draw, good call. Here comes Cooper, the big fullback, and he's really dumped. And there's no first down, and the fullback took the shot. Al Harris and Todd Bell on the tackle. Now you got the barefoot fella almost in the end zone, in the end zone, on the base path, backing off. He's had one tremendous punt today, and a couple that were just average. He's gone 37, 37, 52 for a 42-yard average. Jeff Fisher back to take it. Everybody getting away from it, particularly Chicago. And the Bears are going to have another chance with over 10 minutes left. Not a very good kick by the young man. Well, the fans are a little bit upset. Poor Mr. Miller is finding out what the NFL is all about. He never had a, he never had a kick blocked when he was at Mississippi, am I right, in his whole career? No, he has a good record in that respect. As you look at the U.S. Open men's finals, it's still two sets to one in favor of McEnroe, and he leads the four set 3-1, so John McEnroe appears to be in pretty good shape. First and 10 for the Bears on the San Francisco 30. Toss back left out of the eye to Walter Payton. Cut back inside. Has the ball wrapped up in both arms and is hit hard by both Buns and Reynolds, the linebackers. Boy, this is a tremendous workout for Walter Payton. He is taking a lot of punishment, carrying the ball a lot, and it's... Even though we said it was 65 degrees down there, I was down before the game, and it was down on the field at 75 or 80. It's warm down there. And when those linebackers have been breathing on you all game, it might be 110 down there. They have hit Walter a lot. Second down. And call it seven, more like six. 
The ball's in the 28. 49ers coming up on the corners. Evans is back. He sets up, got good protection. Throws to Ricky Watts on the 15. Did he catch it or did he trap it? I don't know. That ball was thrown so hard, I couldn't tell whether it skipped in, but they're ruling it a grab. They put the... The it coverage, looked, Eric Wright was up very tight on him on the coverage. He went for an out and then went across the field. He had to adjust his pattern. Pretty good pass blocking, and Evan just waited for Watts to find a place to uh, catch the ball, and they are ruling a catch first down, Chicago at the 15. A great throw by Vince Evans, who stayed in there and planted those feet on the real grass. Here we go, first down and 10. The 49ers are just not getting the pass rush this second half. You're right, John. Here's a sweep by Walter Payton to right. Sorry, got a step. Payton runs into linebackers and gets to about the seven-yard line. Ford, the big defensive end, making the stop. Walter got out. Looked like Sorry, the guard, made a good block on the outside for him and allowed him some room. Payton has carried 27 times for 97 yards. 19 on the clock. The Bears do have their three timeout. The 49ers only had two left. Right on the pitcher's mound. Second and two on the seventh. Suey and Payton, a pro set behind. The bootleg doesn't fool. Evan straightens up. Oh, Robin Earl at the two-yard line. Couldn't hold on. The ball, ball was a little low. Hicks was there. I think it came off of his knee as he was running and in stride and the ball was down low and he didn't get his hands down to hold the ball. But it was a nice fake of a of a uh, play action and run by Evans. And here goes Earl after making the contact. The ball is down. Well, he missed, hit his hands and then hit, went off his thigh. Should have had that football. No question about it. A crucial call for Chicago. Third down and two on the seven. They were down here earlier and came away with a fumble and nothing. Great drop back. Payton's out of the back. He's going for Walker Payton. It's on the way by Dwayne Hicks. A great defensive play by number 22. What a super play by Dwight Hicks as he has Payton out of the backfield. But the big thing is the 49ers are giving Evans a lot of time back there, a lot of time to look for his receivers. Hicks just made a super defensive play. Would you kick a field goal now and go 21-20? Yeah. Yes, I would. It was 7.51 left. A lot of time left. Good point. Take the Thomas field goal, which will be held on the 14. It's a 24-yarder. That's Fashnagel. Mr. Clutch holding the ball for it. Ball is full left. It's no good. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line. San Francisco is held, and Thomas is missed. San Francisco 21, Chicago 17. With four minutes and 32 seconds to go in San Diego, Detroit's Eddie Murray set to attempt a field goal that would put the Lions ahead. The snap is perfect. The kick is up, and the Lions have moved ahead of the Chargers. 23-21, now 2.35 to play in that game. Back to Brookie and Johnny Morris. A four-point lead is still there. A four-point lead for San Francisco. They get the ball after the missed field goal by Thomas. First and ten on the 20. Montana now with a strong left formation. A tight formation. Solomon goes in motion. Solomon back to throw, keeping the back in. He's dancing the five spot. Over the 35-yard line, almost to the 35. Coons and Campbell knocking out the receiver. Let's take a look at that missed field goal attempt by Bob Thomas. Notice the ball from Hilgenberg is Bashnagel. It's a little bit low. Bashnagel has trouble getting it down. As we continue here, you'll see it's a little bit late there, and Thomas had to hesitate for a moment, and then he just hooked it all over to, the, to his left. It's a three-man thing. It's a team effort when the field goal is kicked or missed. First and ten on the 33. A big catch by Clark. Montana heading off to Ricky Patton. Patton going forward. He was hit hard but picked up four or five before Coos again made the stop. 
Montana is a cool customer. Yeah, well, and this is a very needed drive. There's still 7.25 on that clock. A long time left in this football game, but there's no question about it. The Bears were down there twice for points and came out empty-handed. Wilson in at left linebacker. Number 55 for Chicago. Montana's gotten his signal, his play. Second down six on the 37. Can the 49ers run it well enough to hold that ball? The fullback, Cooper, out to almost the 40-yard line. Comes another crucial third down call both ways. Well, Joe Montana will be looking towards the sidelines. As you see him right now, he's just taking the play in from Guy Benjamin, who got it from Bill Walsh. And let's see what they come up with. Third and four. Will the Bears put an all-out blitz on him like they like to do in these situations late in the ball game? Or will they play it straight? Let's see. They're a throwing team. They've got a short yardage offense. An appearance, but he's going to throw it. Montana's back. He's got some heat on him. He's throwing the ball. Great catch by Ricky Pat. No, it's called no good. Walter Scheid comes up with a football. Fisick makes the play and the nail. Almost a great catch by Ricky Pat. A super play by Gary Fensick as the ball was coming down. It seemed to take ages to get down. He was trying to throw up and over to Patton. And Fensick timed his hit as the ball got there and joked the ball loose to a disillusioned right now, Ricky Patton. Here's Miller, the young man who oh, had to jump for the snap. Barefoot on the sand, he gets it out of there, end over in Fisher at the 24-yard line. Fisher brings it back. 35-yard line with 5.59 left. A lot of time in the football game. The Bears have the football, and Walter Payton, and they trail by four. Everybody wants to be a coach these days, but how would you like to be the coaches on both sides of this field? 5.59 left, a 21-17 San Francisco lead, and Chicago has the ball first and 10 on the 35-yard line. Evans back to throw, he's going deeper, Ricky Watts, and overthrows him at the 18-yard line, and Eric Wright almost put his arms around Ricky Watts early. And he certainly did late after the ball was already hit the ground. He had his neck, arm around his neck, but they went for the bomber, a one-on-one -on -one situation. Boy, you like to have that situation late in the ball game. That's how the Bears beat him with James Scott a couple of years ago. Okay, here comes the ball. Let's take a look. Eric Wright puts his hand there. I didn't see the ball there. Couldn't it was overthrown. It. Yeah. Bill Friel tells me that Evans threw that with 55 yards on a direct line. It's still now second down and 10. The quarterbacks are up for San Francisco. Evans back to throw. Overthrow it. Intercepted. Intercepted by Dwight Hicks. And the man from Michigan carries it back inside the 50-yard line. Evans tried to throw the ball away, I believe, and threw it into the safety man's hand. And he didn't see Hicks downfield. The 49ers did put kind of a blitz on. Hacksaw Reynolds, 64, comes late. You'll see 64. He takes up Noah Jackson on the line, but the pass rush wasn't all that much. And Evans threw the ball over Robin Earl's head, figuring that he was just getting rid of the ball. And there was Dwight Hicks catching the ball just like a wide receiver does. Nice catch. The 49ers work on that a lot in practice, having those defensive backs catch the football. I'll tell you, Hicks out of Michigan, some good, solid football player. The 49ers with 542 must keep the football now and not get it back to Chicago. Can they do it? First down, Paul, oh, the big fullback Cooper. Gets away from one Now it's going behind the line of city. And flags are down. It'll be a crack back or a clip on the outside, perhaps. And they, may have, they may have called it on a Ricky Patton. We're going to have to go to Brent Musburger in New York at NFL Control. Six seconds to go. John Capaletti will take a handoff from Dan Fouts. Did he get in and score the touchdown against the Lions before he fumbled? The official said yes, he did. Indeed, look at that. He broke the plane. The freeze frame proves it. 28-23, less than a minute to go. Back to Johnny and Tom Brookshire. 
Referee Bob Frederick getting ready to walk off the penalty against the 49ers. Obviously, the Bears will take it. He will give us a call here on what it was. Illegal use of the hands. Offense number 32. Repeat down number one. Ricky Patton detected using his hands, trying to make a block. San Francisco comes out on first and 20 on their own 40-yard line. The young interceptor is hitting it out now. There's a handoff to the fullback. Makes some yardage, but not nearly enough. That was Cooper getting it out a little bit as Al Harris made the tackle. San Diego leading Detroit now 28-23 in the fourth period. Seattle beating Denver 13-10. That must have been a bitter battle. And that was at home, too, for Seattle. They don't usually win at home. But Tara loves that one. Okay, we've got a third down, no, a second down and long passing situation. Let's see how the 49ers play it with 5.03 left in the game. Second and 17. Mike Wilson, young rookie, is out right to the bottom. Montana back to throw. Oh, wow. Inside the 35, Gary Fitzek making the tackle, and somebody missed an assignment. Clark had nobody within five yards. Boy, you hit it on the head. There was a mistake, a mistake in the defense. As Clark gets out free, and he's looking, he's so wide open, he can't believe it. He's waiting for that ball, waiting for that ball. Still no white jerseys. And finally, Dwight Clark gets the first down and was a 17-yard situation. This is how wide open he was. Obvious mistake in the Bears secondary. A tremendous 24-yard pass. A great catch and read by Clark, who is a very smart receiver. And it's first and 10 on the 34, the Chicago 34. Montana puts his fullback in motion. It's Ricky Patton on a trap off the left side and picks up some, a lot of yards. Walker shot stops him at the 25-yard line. Looked like a false trap. Pulled a guard and just ran in behind it. Almost like a delay trap. A draw, yeah, like you say, draw trap. It was a good play. And it puts them in great position because they're second and two down deep in Bear territory. That mistake in the defensive backfield may cost the Bears this football game. Good very well, John. 3.30 on the clock. San Francisco's got the ball in the four-point lead. Point. Hand off to Ricky Patton. Gets the first down. Vincent making the tackle. They beat the blitz on that one, too. The Bears were bringing everybody in the gaps, and he still got through. Patton went back against the grain and got some key yardage for the first down. Good heads up running by Patton. You have to keep your eyes open on that kind of a play. And he did because the Bears had white jerseys coming in from every direction. Montana is 20 of 32 for 297. Two touchdown passes. And Patton has picked up 51 yards. Neil Armstrong doesn't like it. First and 10. The delay by the fullback. Cooper. Waited long enough for the hole to open up. To the 13-yard line, Gary Campbell making the tackle. And the 49ers are hustling. Keith Fanhorse, number 71, was all the way downfield blocking on Bruce Heron on that play. And you're talking about tackles. He's getting down the field 10 yards. And they aren't used to doing this much run blocking like this. That's a great job they're doing. 221. You can see the clock. The 49ers have two timeouts left. The Bears, of course, have to make up a four-point deficit somehow. Second and two on the 13. Cooper. He may have not close. Good effort. Hampton had a tackle part of him, and Coons also helped. Okay, there you see it, 5-3. McEnroe in the fourth set, he already leads two sets to one, so if McEnroe wins one more game, it's all over. He will have beaten Borg not only in the U.S. Open, but as you know at Wimbledon, and I think maybe the tide's turning. McEnroe is such a popular guy. I'm glad I don't have to interview him. I've done some of the great, remarkable interviews anyway without having to interview him. Alright, two minute, two minute warning. As you see Montana talking to Coach Bill Walsh. Chicago trailing 21-17. Last two minutes are going to be a ripper. You know. 
as soon as you settle into the leather-trimmed bucket seat. And shift into first, Cimarron is a new kind of Cadillac for a new kind of Cadillac owner. With front-wheel drive, rack and pinion steering, and Cadillac's exclusively tuned touring suspension. Plus the best mileage estimates in Cadillac history. Cimarron, now at all Cadillac dealers. Forget Sports Saturday next week, the Marlboro Cup, live from Belmont, and the World Individual Speedway Championships from over in England on Sports Saturday right here on CBS. Now it's beginning to get a little binding. It's third down and one on the 12-yard line under the two-minute warning. When this snap is, takes place, it will be under two minutes. It's actually third and about a half a yard, so I would imagine that you pretty much have to go with a QB sneak to be safe to get the first down, wouldn't you? I would imagine that'd be a good idea. Montana's a 200-pounder. He looks small with that group of heavies, but he falls forward, but he has it, and there's no fumble possibility, which I'm sure is running through the Bears' mind. However, they did have that one bad snap. Yes. Easily is in the West Virginia rookie at fullback, and Ricky Patton is the halfback, and Montana the QB. close, Walt Easley, the rookie, up over the top, Bob Fredericks calling time out to unpile bodies, Gary Campbell made the tackle. They may have given it to him on the forward progress, it looks like the ball is over the white mark, it's very close, very close. I think he might have made it. Interception by Vince Evans as the Bears appeared to be driving. And then, of course, the open Clark, the receiver, on third down and 17, that turned into a first on this drive. No, he didn't Four quite make it. He's got four inches, and that much. Well, for the armchair quarterbacks, male and female, sit back and watch this one. You're going to see a, a couple of tons of beef on both sides of the line of scrimmage. I say you have to go for it in this situation to get the first down, maintain control of the ball because you are up by four points, which, which uh, the Bears would have to score a touchdown to beat you, and they might not get the chance if you can get this first down. So if I was the coach, I'm not the coach, well, he's already decided he's going to go for it. Well, Hampton and the Bears are all whooping it up. They've got to get a lot of penetration. They've got to make sure there's no gain at all. Well, if they don't make it, the mistake was not quarterback sneaking it on third down. This is the ball game. Fourth and less than that. Oh, my gosh. Wide sweep. He's wide open. Ricky Patton is going to score a touchdown on short yardage. Ricky Patton. What a game he has had today. Caught a touchdown pass. And now has put the nail in the coffin of the Chicago Bears. Well, I'll today. tell you what. That is quite a call. Fourth and a couple of inches to go. They go to the outside. The Bears did not expect it in any way, shape, or form. There's Henderson, but he's got number 51, Randy Cross, right there, just wheeling him out of the play, and Patton got around the horn. Touchdown, San Francisco. I like it because it's really an offense loaded with imagination. Walsh will try anything, and these young guys seem to rise to it and carry it out. Montana is going to be holding, and Matt Barr is going to be kicking. It's good. Great drive, and the last play was really superbly thought out. Here it is, a replay of Ricky Patton's run for the Roses. And you're going to see 23, Walvershaw get caught inside, but you can't blame him because who would expect him to go to the end on this kind of a play on fourth and two inches? Randy Cross got out in front, and the Bears just had the chase from the inside, and Patton's too quick. He got to the outside. Of course, it works. It makes it look like the greatest play ever called, but... Left cornerback should never have been caught inside, though. Short yardage, I don't care what it is. Somebody has to set up outside. And that is a rookie's position, and it's not easy. The 49ers, though, had a chance to fold in this ball game. In the third period, they didn't even have the ball. My gosh, they hung in there. They made Walter Payton fumble on the two. They got a tremendous interception by Hicks, a diving interception to get this last job started. And Montana was doing what he had to be, particularly with that... Third and 17 throw to Clark across the middle. No 
those are the kinds of situations that a defense wants to get the offense in, especially at that point of the game, second or third and 17. You want them to have to throw for long yardage. And yet, there was a mistake in the defensive backfield. That really hurts a team. Number 10, Matt Barr, kicking off. The Bears will have a minute and 20 some odd seconds. It's a low kick, a real soccer kick. Handled by Williams, now picked up. Williams to the 24 yard line and drilled. Bears now with 11 points to make up and a minute 19. Here's the final scores on the U.S. Open, and McEnroe is the winner again, two, de two in a row, back to back. And, and re Borg, relatively easy. And Borg has still never won this professional championship in this country. The Bears come out. They'll get big splits, get me throwing. Three wide receivers, Mark Brunzett, Bash Nagel, and Ricky Watts. Payton's out of the backfield. Ricky Watts takes it to 40. Down to immediately. Eric Wright. The Bears with three timeouts and not much time. 103, 102. Evans back. A lot of time. Now he's going to slide it out to slip to Williams in the flat. Williams gets out of bounds at 46. That stops the clock at 52 seconds. Bears had the ball driving inside the two, and that great tackle by Buns jarred it out of Walter Payton's hands. That's two games in a row where they actually had a chance to, to score within a yard or two of the goal line and had a, a critical fumble. Last week's was controversial. This one was not controversial. Tonight on CBS, of course, 60 minutes, and the 33rd Annual Emmy Awards with Ed Asner. Some people there. It should be a great show. Evans with a lot of time. Williams flag is down on the field. Williams still trying to run it. And gets to the 42-yard line to smother. Terry Fatola making the stop. Looked like there might have been a defensive halfback climbed all over the outside receiver on the right flank. Well, they're going to give the Bears those little passes to the backs out of the backfield now. They've got three guys that are 30 yards down the field spread across the field because when you got an 11-point cushion, you're in pretty good shape. The Bears are going to go home with an 0-2 record. Fortunately for Chicago, Green Bay lost today and Tampa Bay lost. Detroit was losing to San Diego. Did we get a final on that game? We haven't gotten. They were trailing by three points the last time we heard. 50 seconds. Uh, Detroit is trailing 28-23 as Capaletti has scored for the Chargers. That's a final score on goal. And Minnesota plays and Oakland, Chicago I believe, tomorrow night. Timeout. So that will be no easy one for the Vikings. But that doesn't change or alter anything. The Bears have not gotten off the dime yet. They're going to be 0-2. And, and traditionally, the last four years, they've started out 3-5. and five. And John, it's not that the Bears want for opportunities to win a game because they are there and they have a chance to win it. And they've got to learn how to win the, the tough game. The close ones. And the Bears have not won the close ones over the years. Here's some finals. Atlanta 31-17 over Green Bay. They were down 17-0, won that game. You know the New Orleans score, an upset over Los Angeles. Houston beat Cleveland, 9-3. Tampa Bay lost. It was Kansas City, 23-10. Always take the AFC. And, whoops, no more. We've got one here that's almost final. 42 seconds left. And the 49ers, with three rookies in their secondary, have played extremely well against the tough Chicago Bears. You look at the Buffalo Bills, two big games in a row, 35-3. This was on the road for Buffalo. Chuck Knox got them going. There's a final, San Diego. The Chargers beat Detroit 28-23, so the best record in the yeah. NFC Central Division is 1-1. Seattle beat Denver 13-10. Dallas 30-17 over St. Louis in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia at home against New England, leading 13-3. 42 seconds left. The ball is first and 10 on the 42-yard line. Evans to Williams coming out of the back there. Williams trying to get out of bounds. He stops the clock and does. That'll stop it at about the 37. Peter Turner hanging on. 11 points. A lot can happen in 33 seconds, but 11 points, that's a bunch. Well, this is a real tonic for Bill Walsh and the 49ers after that disappointing loss last week to Detroit. Now they are 1-1, one and, one, and with the Rams losing in their division, it gives them some life. 
The Bears are a team that has to realize that when they get breaks, they've got to take advantage that they are supposed to happen for them. I don't think they're quite ready for that yet. Here's Evans going across the middle of that thing. That really socks into Dwight Hicks. Bastnagel at the 11 yard line. And he... Final score, Philadelphia with that tremendous defense almost shut out the New England Patriots at home in Philadelphia. So the Eagles will be 2-0 in the Eastern Division. Dallas is winning, would be 2-0 in the Eastern Division. Atlanta's 2-0 in the Western Division with San Francisco going to be 1-1. One one. The Central Division, as you said, is going to be a jump ball. Don't forget, tonight on CBS, it's 60 Minutes, which everybody has to watch. You know that. The 33rd Annual Emmy Awards comes on later. Shirley MacLaine is the co-host with Ed Asner, and we'll find out all the biggies for the Emmy Awards. And then one day at a time, all on CBS tonight. Walter Payton is out of the ball game. He has been the last series or so, so... Williams and Suey are in there. Williams, a very good pass receiver out of the backfield. Bashnagel and Marjoram go to the slot left, the upper part of your screen. Ricky Watts to the bottom. Evans looking for Watts to the bottom. Evans is dropped 12-yard line. Terry Catola, the linebacker, making the stop. Seventeen seconds left in this football game. Second timeout is burned by the Bears. That's the first sack, I believe. The first sack by the 49ers of Vince Evans. This was a game where I don't think you could say San Francisco's defense outsmarted Chicago or anything like that. I think they just basically outplayed them. They went with a 3-4 defense, very little fancy stuff. Their cornerbacks had to play a lot of man-for-man -man coverage, and they played solid football, and you held the Bears to 17 points. That's not too bad for a defense that's been run over the last couple of years. The Jets beat, or I shouldn't say they beat them, they're leading them in the fourth quarter, 23-17. to 17. You know, the Bears gave up two fumbles, lost two fumbles in the second half, and the interception. And three turnovers in a half, uh, in the second half, I think decided this, because Chicago seemed to have the offensive rhythm and they looked like they were moving the ball extremely well and you don't cross the double white line it doesn't count 17 seconds left san francisco 28 chicago 17 at candlestick park Vince evans has gone all the way at quarterback and he just threw his 33rd pass williams catches it with barry at about the 11 or 12 yard line Williamson and Wiscott. That's going to be it. The 49ers have won their home opener by 11 points over the Chicago Bears. That last play did not count. The gun went off before the snap of the ball. The officials are saying no play. So the final score remains 28-17, the 49ers over the Bears. A uh, good football team coached by Bill Walsh, who's also the general manager and has a contract through 1985. The Bears lose a tough one. This is Tom Brookshire for Johnny Morris saying so long from Candlestick Park. Once again, the final score, San Francisco 28, Chicago 17. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. The National Football League is a presentation of CBS.